Hey everyone, a new podcast with my buddy, Matt Fultron. I know you're going to love it. It's just us driving down to the Irvine Improv. What do I have to promote? Uh, do me a favor, check out my vlog. I'm posting them bi-weekly at least, sometimes three a week, sometimes four a week. Uh, it's on my YouTube channel. You can find my YouTube channel at, uh, just type in Burt Kreischer YouTube, or you can just go to BurtBurtBurt.com, and you can find my YouTube channel through there. You can find all my info through there. If you haven't already, rate, review, subscribe to this podcast. Uh, and also, if you're going to do any holiday shopping, do me a favor, and uh, if you get a chance, or if you remember, go to my click-through Amazon banner. Leanne and I did that this uh, Cyber Monday. We did that. We ended up going to Target, with, and then when we found something we wanted for the girls, we'd ch- price check it up against Amazon.com, and a lot of times, it was like $40 cheaper for like big Target items, or like $10 cheaper for like smaller things. It kind of blew us away, so we did a lot of our shopping on Amazon.com, but we did use our, our click-through banner. I went to Birdcast and then clicked through and then it's on my phone. So do that. We get some money back. So if you enjoy the podcast, that's a way to give back. You don't have to, though. So uh, that's it. I hope you enjoy this podcast. Like I said, I got a new one coming out next week with Boston comedy legend Jimmy Tingle. Um, and I'll be, I'm, it's multimedia month, man. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Your boy's down 17 pounds. I'm feeling fucking fantastic. And the vlog coming out next week, you will see all my weight loss in all its glory as I sing Plush by Stone Temple Pilots in Assless Chaps. That's a big one. I ran into Brody Stevens on the street with Jimmy Tingle. (laughs) He's in it. Sarah Silverman was on the show. Matt Fultron. Joe DeRosa. uh, Josh Adam Myers. It's a great, great vlog that I'm editing right now. So enjoy the podcast. Have a great week. Peace. This is the cat. Last night? Yeah. Like I, I no, I know. I saw the food came, and then you had to go on stage. Yeah, and then and then uh, I got home, and I was like, uh, I was like, I'll go home, bed, go to bed, skinny. Yeah. And then uh, went to bed, woke up, had a shake, and then at like three o'clock, I felt like dizzy. Like yeah. fucking dizzy and realized I've only had like 300 calories all day. Yeah, you gotta eat. Ah, oh, that's my fucking Fitbit. I'll tell you how to bring it. Um, so I was like, yeah, you gotta eat. That's the key to a diet is fucking eating a lot. Yeah. But eating healthy and eating a lot. Exactly. And then you get, then I was so hungry. I was like, I can't, my brain wasn't thinking straight. Yeah. And I was literally going into the, going into the fridge like, what are you doing? I think it just cracked a little open. I don't uh, know this car that well. Whose car is it? It's a rental car. My car got destroyed. When? Like a couple weeks ago, but then I'm going to New York, so I'm not even bothering. But I mean, how, did you, how did it get destroyed? Hit and run on the side, side of the road. Seriously? I was asleep. Did you get insurance for it? I got so much money for it. Are you serious? I'm serious. Nice! And you don't need a car going to New York? No. Are you going to bank that money and wait till you get another car? In like, well, in, in yeah, like because I'm just, I'm just so busy right now, I'm going to um, put it off. Yeah. Because I just, I like money so much more than cars. It's a, it's a fucking, it's not a bad time to be carless. No. In, in history. We don't have a, we don't have a car. We have two cars, but we don't use one of them. Yeah, it's like Uber is a fucking miracle. Dude, I'm using Uh, Uber non-fucking stop these days. Yeah, it's great. Rental cars and fucking, uh, what do you call it? I take a, uh, if I go to someone's podcast, I take an Uber there. Yeah, I don't want to deal with fucking parking way. and. I don't even like driving. I'll be honest with you. It's I like, hate driving. I wish I could get rid like, of it all together. And everyone just took <laughs> cars. Because watch this laid back guy turn into a fucking asshole once I start driving. Yeah. It is amazing how fucking you ever you ever cut off some one of your friends in traffic no. <laughs> and watch them lose their fucking mind. What, do it on purpose? No, 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 just, just on an accident yeah. and then they pull up next to you and they're fucking a, a complete lunatic. Right. And you're like, what the fuck? And then you you get closer and you're like, oh, hey. And they're like, hey. Yeah. <laughs> and so, it was you. So this is how I act sometimes when you're not around. This is what I'm like when no one sees me. <laughs> <laughs> I got, uh, I did that to my dad's I think my dad's partner saw me driving like a fucking asshole when I was 16 years old. Yeah. And it was like, and I was just like flicking anyone that fucking questioned me off. And right, 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 right. Just being fucking 16. Right. Like, 
instead of waiting for the light, just cutting through the grass and cut in front of people. <laughs> when I was learning how to drive stick, the only way I could do it is if I slammed on the gas and peeled out like a fucking maniac. Slammed on the <laughs> gas and peeled out. You know what I mean? Just like for some reason, it would stall if I didn't just do it really quick. And I was like... <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> So obnoxious. And it was like in a Volkswagen Golf, too, so it wasn't like I was in a Mustang or something. What? <laughs> what? Uh, wait, where, where, did you learn how to drive in Maryland? Yeah. Oh, seriously? Which is like, learn, it's not even learning to drive, because it's like no traffic and shit. It's chilled out. Yeah. When I got here, I had to learn to drive all over again. Oh, yeah, the fucking driving in LA is night and day. Yeah. I always say, I don't know, this is probably sexist. But, like, my wife's not cognizant of stuff. And I, I think it's because she's a female. The cognizant of stuff like uh, being respectful in uh, when she's parking on the side of the road. Like, yeah. when she parks on the side of the road, if there's just a spot, she'll just pull into this. If there's, like, say there's no cars. Mm-hmm. And it's driveway, driveway, and, like, three cars fit fit, she'll just park in the middle. And I go, <laughs> why are you doing that? <laughs> pull up to that guy's driveway. She's like, well, right, it's right, right here. Right. I mean, yeah, but now you've determined... Yeah. How many cars fit here? Exactly. I mean, that's not fair. You gotta pull up. And I, and I think it's because she's never been beaten up. Like, she's never been... Like, my wife will also open a door, and if it bangs into another car, and the guy gets upset, she's like, are you serious? It's just a ding. Whoa. Wheelbarrow. Holy shit. That's gonna cause a fucking... That's gonna cause a... mile fucking traffic jam. Someone dropped a wheelbarrow on the 134. 132. 134? 134. Um, yeah, like... She opened a, a, a gay guy did this one time. We were at dinner. Gay couple moved in, moved to LA. I don't know where they're from. Moved to LA, and they, we were having dinner with them. And uh, he was like, "Oh, I got into it with this like meathead today." Uh-huh. And I was like, "What was it?" And he said, "I opened my door and accidentally binged his car." <laughs> and I go, "Oh yeah, like that would make me irate." I'm so aware. That if I park next to someone, I put my hand on the outside of the door right. to make sure that it doesn't bump into the car. Right. Like so that my hands in between my, my that I break a finger before letting that guy get his car dinged. Yeah. Um, I find but but don't you find too if you just say you're sorry or if, or if someone said they were sorry to you and you'd be like, it's cool. But you need yeah. that sorry. Oh yeah. Oh a guy pulled up, we were parking to go get Georgia the other day. Yeah. And a guy pulled up and backed right right up to the uh, the bumper of our car. Uh-huh. Like, we were pull, pulled in, and a car was, r- like, pretty close behind us. And then he pulled in and backed up right up to the bumper. And I was like, and Leanne's losing her mind. Now we're not going to be able to get fucking out of here. <laughs> and so I go, I just go up to his door, his car yeah. window. This was the only aggressive thing I did is I tapped on his window with my ring. Oh. So, it, like, it, so it sounds like... That's cop style. Yeah. Right. And he was, and I was, and he rolled, he, like, got scared. Like, but... Not scared, but just like startled. Right. And then rolled down his window, and I was like, "Hey, man, we're gonna have a hard time getting out. Do you mind scooting up an inch?" And he was like, "Uh, uh, uh okay." Yeah. And he was like, "Oh, you could see the pain in his eyes." Like, mm-hmm. and then he moved up literally a foot. Mm-hmm. Well, I was like, "What a fucking asshole!" <laughs> but yeah, people act much differently in cars than they do on foot. It's like very aggressive and very um, almost passive aggressive. They'll check you like you're playing hockey. Yeah. They'll do it. They'll they'll do it legally. It's amazing. Everyone like Leanne will Leanne will talk shit. Everyone will talk shit. You kind of have to. This is my theory on it. Is your body doesn't know? Like your body is fucking alarmed by all this stuff. Your adrenaline's up, but your body isn't moving at all. Like, all this scary shit is happening. But then you don't run or fight. You're just sitting in a chair. So if you don't if you don't let it out verbally, you're not letting it out at all. And you're just stressed the fuck out. Yeah, what was it? Uh, Our bodies aren't made for this shit. This is all new. <laughs> yeah. I always think that the... Um, people with anxiety disorder were really just fucking trying to, like, trying to regulate or process all the information that they really have a hunter's brain, like, yeah, like yeah, a, like yeah, a yeah. go out in the wood, woods, hunt for my food brain, and that all this information just overwhelms that sensitive brain. 
there's all this stress that comes in as a um, like in a net it feels like a, a danger like real danger even bills stuff like that it seems like danger but you can't you can't fight it on an instinct level there's too many steps and you, you like in the nature you either fight or you run and if you can't pay the gas bill you're just like fuck <laughs> you don't know what to do with it that's why I always go running when I can't pay the gas bill usually when I come back I have a new business idea I can't I can't I haven't been able to run this week or today I tried to run I couldn't run at all but I think it was because I had low calories I had a salad and, and literally as soon as I had a salad I started feeling better yeah man maybe I'll get a milkshake when I get there yeah dude <laughs> really crank it up it's so funny like all the different diets everybody says their diet is right there's dude. like the high fat no carb diet there's the vegan diet there's everything like everyone always steps up and be like no this is the real way yeah and whoever's talking I believe them I go oh that guy's right oh no 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 this vegan's right yeah I just don't fucking know you just gotta fucking exercise well, don't was, eat like a maniac when well, I was doing it. Rogan I said to him uh, I said yeah I'm dieting and he goes what kind of diet are you doing <laughs> and I, that's like that's like putting it really to the fire cause you know he's yeah, read yeah, 19 yeah, yeah, yeah. million dietary right. books He's friends with all the fucking guys that train mixed martial artists right. and, and feed them. And I kind of ballparked my diet and I was like, lean protein, lots of greens, lots of fruits. No, I said, I said, uh, uh, light on breads. And he's like, light on breads. And I was like, no breads, really. And I think breads are really bad for you. They are. But I mean, they're, they're everywhere. And, but they're so good. They're great. They're so what? What better have way to hold me? Yeah, have it in the guy. Have it for fucking lunch, and yeah. then be good at dinner. That's what I said. Have whatever you want for lunch. This is the full charge diet. Have whatever you want for lunch. Uh, work out and then have a, a, a reasonable dinner with no bread. Now you're only twenty pounds overweight. <laughs> Dude, I'd be happy with twenty pounds overweight. I've been swimming. You have? Like crazy, yeah. I realized that. Uh, I realized. I started paying attention to the fact that I have blo- high blood pressure. Like, what's your blood pressure? It's uh, it's it's good now, but there was a day where I was checking it, and I was checking it wrong. It got really high. Uh, like like one seventy over like one ten. Yeah, that's And it's because I was uh, it's because I was panicking about it and yeah. like walking around and not measuring it correctly. So I went to a doctor, got my shit straightened out, got some pills, and fucking exercise every day, and now it's it's almost perfect. But uh, I started losing weight, and I started liking that, so I've been exercising. Yeah, it's. I want to make a scale that, like you'll, you 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 just explain, you type into it that you're starting a weight loss program, mm-hmm. and then once you step on it, the next day you step on it, it just says you're lighter anyway. Right. right and that right, inspires right. you. Yeah. Because that's the key, is just getting inspired. It's, when you, it's fun when you first start, too, because you can really... That's when the pounds go. Dude, I lost 12 pounds in six days. It's once you get close to your fighting weight. That's when the pounds slow down. Oh, your right body, now, right now... I'm used to it. Right now, I'm stuck at, like, 243. Yeah, there you go. I lost it. I shredded it, like, the first <laughs> exactly, six days. Exactly. And then the last few days, I've just been, like, juggling 243, 244. Mm. I'd like to get rid of, I'd like to get down to, I'd like to get down in the 220s and I'd be like really fucking happy. Mm-hmm. And that's still obese. But it's like obese enough where my blood pressure is probably back to normal. That's American thin. American thin? <laughs> American thin. Uh, barely obese is American thin. Barely you ever, obese. You ever be in the Midwest somewhere and they're like, oh, what are you worried about? Are you skinny? Yeah. Oh, you skinny? It's because you can stand up. I said one time, I think I was in like, Omaha yeah. or uh, or Des Moines and I said oh I'm so fat and they were like uh, no you're not and I was like no <laughs> here I'm not fat but in LA and like everywhere else I'm really fat but on planet earth on planet I'm earth really fat. you're not fat <laughs> I think I'm moving to Nebraska where I'm not fat I mean I look at like I said last night on stage 250 is the threshold of being able to wipe your ass is that right? Yep, two fifty six foot. That's threshold right there. 
So, so you got to a point where it was getting difficult? Yeah, you, where you start going to wipe your ass and, it's, and you feel like, and you're like, you're t- your finger tipping it. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And 255 is what I was the heaviest at, and I definitely, wiping your ass, you've got to, like, it's a pain in the fucking, it's not easy. I got up, I'm like 190 right now. I got up to, like, 210. I did a tour with Tosh this summer. This summer? And yeah, we were just pigging out. But he's, he's like, and super healthy, right? No. He likes to eat. Thin people love to eat. Really? Even though they're just naturally thin, they love it. No repercussions. He doesn't work out? He works out, but he's thin no matter what. Whereas I just blow up. It's day to day. I could be thin one day, fat the next. It's like it's almost like instant karma with what I'm eating or drinking or exercising with. Now where did you guys go? But I, I was like, uh, yeah, I was 20 pounds heavier than I am now. I stepped at the on a scale at the gym, like in the middle of it. I'm like, what? Because I never thought I ever got over 200. I was like 210. I was like, get the fuck out of here. We did the we did the Northeast. Really? Colleges? Uh, no. We did the, um, like some theaters. Wow, is he still doing Dodge Point now? Yeah. That's going cool forever, I guess. I guess. Why not? Why not, right? There's I'd do it forever. Be, there's always going to be idiots on the internet. What do you, yeah, what do you guys, what, like, what do you want out of it? What do you want, a sitcom? You know? Or do you want just a job for the rest of your fucking you life? You want a job? And if you can get asses in the seats for your nighttime job, that's even better. Oh, and his is his does designed that. for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's perfect. Why, you know, why? Why why switch it? Why switch it if it's working? Yeah. He's always someone I wish I hung out with more because I really like him. Yeah, he's cool. But I just, my lifestyle's not set up to do that. You travel for a living. And then when you're not traveling for a living, you're traveling for a living. <laughs> yeah. I always want to like call him and go, hey man, I want to go surfing this week. Tell me when you're going and I'll come go surfing with you. Yeah. Woo! As soon as you do that, aren't you waiting for the car behind you to smack into you? Kind of. Just hear that. But you know, I got the basic coverage on this car, so I'm down for whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Is he still surfing a lot? I don't know. I don't think so. Really? Well, I mean, he's got the show. But I don't know. He's mentioned it. Uh, he's mentioned that he's still surfing. God. I don't know, man. He's, you scared of the ocean? Yeah, I'm sometimes. I'm scared of the ocean. Sometimes I am. Do you hear that? White Lives Matter joke I made last night. Yeah, yeah, Fucking yeah, yeah. That's great, dude. And a horse shit. <laughs> you gotta try that more. Yeah, I should. <laughs> you know, didn't you say beforehand like this is a new joke? I like, might have. Like, I might have. Don't do that. Don't do that. Oh no, no, funny. I said it afterhand. I said uh, it at the end. I said all oh, that joke will never be told again. I got a joke that was getting groans for a while, but I knew it was good, and I finally made it work last night. What was that? It's like a one-liner, so that's that's easy to get a groan. But it's like, um, it's like I go out with a lot of questionable girls. They want to come over Netflix and chill. Next day, it's nothing but WebMD and panic. <laughs> oh, Netflix and chill, WebMD and panic. And it never worked before <laughs> I said that questionable girls thing up front. Because it's too much of a one-liner. Yeah. You know? That's also a fucking joke that probably won't be funny in a year. You know how these internet turns come and go. Oh, uh... I know exactly what you mean. I, I did a one-liner last night that I hadn't done in a really long time mm-hmm. about... I love when you find a one-liner that you wrote and you can you forget. You're like, oh, shit, yeah, I could tell that. Mm-hmm. Um, I wonder how often in the early 80s... See, my problem with my one-liners is they're way too fucking wordy. Because mm-hmm. I don't do them enough. Right. So once I get them to kind of work, I go, ah, it's fine. <laughs> right. I'm like, uh, you know what I am? I'm like, I'm like the house flipper of comedy. Like, I, I get things up and running, and I'm like, yeah, sell it. It's fine. <laughs> They'll want it. If we can just They'll make a little rate. profit off it, we're fine. <laughs> Look, they're going to change the kitchen anyway. Um, you should have a twin brother that does the details. If I had a twin brother who was meticulous, yeah. and we could go out on the road, and I just start the material, and he and fucking... punch lines it? <laughs> just goes through and goes, hey, uh, thanks, man. And then I'm like, oh, sure, I'm going to be working on the new stuff. 
I'm gonna need you to gain some weight for the new stuff, by the way, for it to work. <laughs> You're too thin for, for to punchline my shit. <laughs> uh, the joke was. Uh, Oh, I wonder how many times in the early 80s a black guy went to cough and everyone thought he was about to beatbox. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good shit. Yeah. That gets laughs. I've seen it. Um, this traffic's fucking unbearable. Yeah, I know. Every day. I can't believe I used to do this. I used to do this twice a week to go out to Bray and Irvine to do Yeah. when I first started. I used to do it a lot too And I used to have a day job I was so dumb I had a day job in Santa Monica And I just never bothered moving I lived right here Oh I would have gotten a day job In fucking Irvine And done every fucking Yeah that, that would have been the move right Done spots Move to fucking night. Irvine Yeah just move to fucking just, Irvine like develop out there and that, I was we, already in Like Jeff Keith did or something And he grew up in like I always I thought he, he did He grew up in Irvine And that's how he there's, started There's Orange County kids That start in Orange County Which is perfect The For, funny when, thing is when Kids start in Orange County and then never bother to come up here at all. I'm not saying move. They don't even bother to do spots up here. That's bonkers. Yeah. But then again, I fucking get it. Because you're going to drive all the way up here just to bomb in front of hipsters? (laughs) (laughs) I have a hard time. Twitter feeds. I have a hard time uh, justifying. Um. Doing sets in the city just because I go, well, it's it, then it fucks with my night. Yeah, man. Like then, then what? Like what do I? I don't go. I don't go to bed on time, and I fuck it, and I can't take the girls to school in the morning, or I'm wasted for the next day. Yeah. It's just I don't think stand up's meant for like married people. <laughs> Maybe not. It's like Mary. If you're married, you just gotta leave your family all together to go do it. Yeah. You can't even have the temptation of them being around. I'm not even married, but like when eight o'clock's rolling around and I have a spot in the city, I'm like, oof. Yeah. I could really stay in. Oh, Joey Diaz was like, dog, I got eleven fifteen at the store. And I was like, why? They've been giving me like twelve forty five, one AM. And I could I only make it half the time. And I'll call in tired, I'll call in drunk, I'll call in whatever. Because it's just it's just pointless. It's just like a dare. It's like they're daring me. Would it be too much to ask them to start doing, like, start the show at five? (laughs) No, because I'll take a shitty spot at 645. I'll take a 645. And then let them still have the prime time. You know, but let, like, Sebastian close it out. Or fucking Bill or Joe or somebody. Sebastian, Bill, Joe, they're fucking, they're fucking, they're earners. They want, they are fucking... Cave beaters, is that it? Like, they love hitting the clubs. They do. They love being at the clubs. Yeah. I like being at the clubs when, like, everyone's there. Yeah. But, like, I want to shoot myself in the fucking mouth when I go to the improv, and it's, like, a bunch of people I've never heard of, and I'm on the show, and, you know, and you're like, oh, great, so I don't, and not only do I not get to watch anyone's show, yeah. sets. It's really fun when you run into people you know. Yeah. Like, I went there this Thanksgiving week. I had spots. I had a spot at the Improv. And it's always better if you have a spot, let's face it. Oh, yeah. Uh, you have a reason to be there. But you just Maybe I'll call in for spots next week at the Improv and do some spots next week. Call in, man. I haven't done, I haven't done spots in fucking forever in the city. It's fun because you're only doing like 10, 15 minutes, so you have no responsibility. You don't have to close out the show. Uh, a killer bomb, no one gives a fuck. Yeah. So that's the upside. But 12.45 at the store, that can leave you feeling dirty. Yeah. That can leave you feeling like, oof. That, you know when you go up there and there's six people and they won't even look at you? That, that hurts. Yeah. That hurts. Um, I, have, I think I have a surgery next week on oh, my yeah? head. On your what? My head. To get a cyst removed or an ingrown air. Uh-huh. This fucking lump. On top of my head, I think it's a cyst. I'll find out. And whose idea was that? Your doctor or yours? Uh, my wife's, of course. Okay. She felt it. She's like, "What is that?" And I was like, "I don't know." Speaking of basic insurance on this car, look what's in front of us. Oh we fuck! We could easily get impaled by fucking metal pipes. That looks right like now. something out of a horror movie from the two early two thousands. It's got like, straps on it. Yeah.
I wish I could just like just smoke pot and then that would be my my cool down at the end of the night. Yeah, I've been getting into that. It's all right, but it's not my favorite buzz in the world. Yeah. Alcohol is my favorite buzz. Alcohol is my favorite buzz, but alcohol is very fleeting. And now I can't sleep off alcohol. I've oh. reached that age too, where it ruins my sleep. So I'm not crazy about alcohol anymore. Yeah, it does fuck with my sleep. It fucks with my next day. Like it, and I don't like. It didn't for like the, up this whole year. I never once noticed the problem, honestly. Uh huh. But man. Yesterday, two days ago, no, yesterday, I drank Thursday, mm-hmm. yesterday, I was fucking out of it all fucking day. <laughs> yeah, dude, because you didn't get any rest. And I hadn't drank in a week, so I felt really fucking amazing. Yeah. Out of it, like, yeah. disconnected, uh, like, just found myself going, like, like shaking my head and being like, wait, I'm alive, I'm, I'm here, I need to be waking up. Right. It's funny. You ever go to the doctor and tell them exactly how much you drink and eat oh, no. and stuff? I do. <laughs> and the doctor goes, wow, this is great. You're, you're, I can tell you're being honest with me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's one upside. I was like... <laughs> Your candor's uh, refreshing. <laughs> then I found out I was 5'10". I was like, yo, I thought I was 5'8 this whole time. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be getting so much more pussy now. Funny when the doctor tells you exactly how you're supposed to live your life, though, and you're like, ah, I can do it for like two or three days. Did you hear the joke I made on stage well, last night? It would be what? easier for me to seamlessly merge into a homosexual lifestyle <laughs> yeah, than right? fucking change my eating habits. Yeah, I know, it's so hard. I did it for like three, four days when I was really scared about my blood pressure. I'm eating fish, I'm eating oatmeal, I'm working out. I lost like serious pounds. I've been good. I've been really good on this diet, but I just had no energy today. Like, I literally was like... And it was just... I just did a shake. And I just... I'm putting so much fucking green stuff in this shake. Yeah. That I'm wondering if it's going to fuck me up at one point. Hang on a sec. Leanne, will you grab my Fitbit off my charger in my man cave? Um, literally, like, tons of fucking kale. Oh, yeah? Celery, kale. Why is kale so popular right now? And was it popular 10 years ago? It was not. I don't know. I think it's just high in nutrients Uh and roughage. Right. So it's good for your intestines. I got some kale the other day. They don't even take the stem out of it. Oh, what? Like, I'm just eating like a leaf. Oh, yeah. Oh, it feels like you're fucking eating a leaf, all right. (laughs) Like I'm eating a fucking maple leaf or some shit. I mix my kale up. I don't eat no straight kale. Oh, I, I blend it up in my in my Vitamix with uh, blueberries, raspberries, uh, cherries. I, I love kale. My my shake doesn't even taste good anymore. I'm so addicted to kale, putting kale into it. Yeah. I don't even know if the fucking thing tastes good anymore. Fuck it. Sounds like it's working. How much did you pay if you could put your car on the back of a trailer and just like almost like a ferry? Yeah. And they'll say, listen, we'll take you down to uh, Huntington Beach. And, and we'll drop you off on the, you know, on the exit at Huntington Beach. We're working this weekend, I would pay um, maybe my 30 paycheck. to $40 a day for that. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'd definitely pay. Yeah. I'd pay $50 to sit in my car, yeah. be on the back of a tractor trailer, and just fall asleep. Just pass out, listen to music, not pay attention. You know what's funny? Is there's a train that goes to Irvine? I don't know what. what I don't know what the schedule's like. No, back. there's not a train coming. There going. is. No, there's there not. There is. There's a uh, Amtrak. You can look at that phone, but it's just gonna say what I'm saying. No, there's uh, not a yeah, train. Yeah, there is. Hang Jan on. Murphy took it down. No. I go to San Diego on it sometimes. She got buzzed last night. Yeah, she was hitting it. <laughs> train from L.A. to Irvine. Oh, it's just a picture of a bunch of guys running a train on a girl. <laughs> oh, you are not or? fucking around. You know how long the train takes? Two hours. Oh, does it? Just like the fucking car ride. Oh, but you, you're chilling. Oh, my God. Dude, it leaves every 
No, this can't be right. I take a bus. I would Why really not? take a bus. Why not? Bus takes a long time. The metro. If, a, if it's a bus that makes stops on the five. <laughs> oh, you know how great that would be. That would Just be get shit. on the fucking train. That would be a shit. From this is ridiculous. I'm, done, I'm telling you, I've done it to San Diego, and it's a nice ride, and it's a scenic ride. Uh, they start getting close to the ocean sometimes. Where's the, where's the LA? LA is the only place you can take it from. Is the Union Station? Union Station. Well, there's like, a train near you. So you gotta you. get to downtown anyway. There's a train near you that you can take to Union Station. Oh, Leanne takes that all the yeah. time. Yeah. Metro. No one takes it. I take it. It's fucking. It's it's better than you think it is. Slightly shady. Slightly shady characters. Other than that, it's fucking. It's pretty great. Assuming it goes where you want it to go, you know, it doesn't go everywhere. Let's see, to Irvine, HIL, I'm gonna pee. Ride 1.7 miles, then keep left onto I-5. To Irvine. Let's do weekend. Eight. Oh, I could take the fucking 440. Get in at 545, go see a movie. Yeah, dude. Take the 2 o'clock, get in at 3 o'clock. It's an hour away. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. And you know, you probably don't want to take the train back to your house uh, once you get to Union Station, but you can Uber from there. And it's well, you just, can't, you can't take the train free. back. That's the problem. Oh, you, oh, well, fuck it then. It doesn't you gotta work. spend the night. Get the hotel and do it that way. But, you know. it's It only goes back. That's the thing. 9 a.m., 12 p.m., 2 p.m., and 6 p.m. That's why you get an Uber to John Wayne and get a goddamn super shuttle. Let's see if Monday to... What? Uber to John Wayne. Not bad. <laughs> Let's see Monday to Friday. Monday to Friday, is, they got a lot of fucking rides. But yeah, you can't take the train back to L.A. until like 5 yeah. o'clock's the latest. That's the rub. Let's see if we can fit this in there. Otherwise, all the comics would be doing that shit. Oh, God. Be getting all drunk and shit. Riding back and forth. Going down to Disneyland. I should reach out and find out if there's an Uber driver who wants to do stand-up. Right. And say, hey man, I'll give you half the money and a set. Yeah. And a fucking umami burger. Oh my god. I actually got recognized by an Uber driver last week. <laughs> fucking proud. Are you serious? He was doing this shit. <laughs> I was with Ari. I never get recognized. I was with Ari in uh, in uh, New York. Yeah. And we were just dicking around. Like I was, I was going to get a sweater for the the show we were doing, uh, the Big J thing. Yeah. And uh, I called him. He's like, "Hey, you want to get something to eat?" So I went over to his place. And then we walked around the East Village, the Lower East Side, then the East Village, and then literally he walked me to my hotel. And we stopped by REI, and I n- I never get recognized. Uh huh. Inside, I'm not even fucking. I'm not even exaggerating. Inside that REI, I got recognized five times. Five times. Five times. What's by an people REI? Who, by people who worked at REI. What's REI? Uh, recreational a- a- expert, and it's a, a sporting goods store okay, for like okay. outdoor shit. Gotcha. That's great. I, and by people who work there. I got recognized once from Doug Love's movies. Uh-huh. I got recognized once for stand-up, and then, like, three times for Travel Channel. got to put on a fucking ca- catcher's mask. You can get mobbed. Catcher's mask? I think I'm going to get recognized more. <laughs> you mean, like, a hockey mask? <laughs> Whatever they got in the store. <laughs> put this shit on. Uh, got this just opened up? Yeah. Yeah, I looked at the map. It, it, it does have pockets where it's... Saturday night can't be that fucking bad. Uh, right? This time of year is no good. People are out shopping. People are out partying. Sunday's usually the best day for this. But, I mean, look at this fucking nonsense. Everyone's going to goddamn L.A. Holy shit. Yeah, it's Christmas party season at the comedy clubs. I know. I don't work well at Christmas parties. Christmas parties are tough. Someone said to me the other day, I want to say it was Segura, was like, 
are you working a lot right now? And I was like, no, I'm taking a whole month off. He was like, oh, because of Christmas parties? And I was like, no. I didn't even think about that. Segura took it off this year, and Tosh used to take it off. Really? Oh, yeah. And it's smart. Because I, I remember one time, I, I didn't know any better, and I was at Brea, and I attacked somebody in the audience. It was in December. And they were on the phone. They were on the fucking phone. And I attacked them. Nowadays, I wouldn't even give a fuck. Yeah. Here, roll those duck windows up. I think yeah, I got blown out. And, um... I ragged on this woman and the whole place turned on me because they all fucking knew her. Because it yeah. was a goddamn office party. Yeah. He well, hated me so much and Magical got on stage and he goes, you know, Matt's selling CDs if you guys want to take the magic home with you. <laughs> <laughs> What's Al doing right now? I'm not sure. He's always doing something. He's, he is the He's one always most, employed. He is the most working motherfucker yeah. in the world. He knows how to, he knows how to get booked. He just is good. good. He's just He's good. good. He's going to be successful in whatever the fuck he did. Absolutely. He just chose stand-up because he wanted to do it. Yeah. But he would have done... He, he, he fucking business modeled it. You think he business modeled it, or do you think it's part of his DNA is that I'm going to succeed? I think it's part of his DNA. And He's I think got, there's planning and shit that comes with it. And there's, there's like, full force, failure doesn't phase me, and then failure doesn't happen that much because it doesn't phase me. Mentality. Do you think it has to do with him getting into like the the um, fucking yeah, the business in the business world first? I think it does. You know, and I, I think some is like I think he, he actually liked the job he had before he started stand up, so he wanted to make sure he liked stand up even more, and you know, you know, be successful at it. Yeah, he's an interesting guy, man. Like that, his. I mean, he's been working since the day he rolled into the business. Yeah. Like, I remember meeting him. I remember everyone told me, you got he's like, like, you got to see how magical you stand up. I saw him and I was blown away. I was like, fuck, man, this is like meticulous. Yeah. Like, he's got, he's just as destructive. Yeah. And then uh, he was, I was talking to him and he was like, yeah, I used to open for Mitch and Chappelle. And I was like, wait, what the fuck? Like, mm-hmm. how, I never even met Mitch. I never, I never, I met Mitch one time, passingly, not even like, hi Mitch, this is Bert, more right. like, hey man, big fan, yeah. like that kind of shit. Thanks man. Yeah, he was in uh, blue sunglasses, like blue uh, lenses, and all his fingernails were painted. I'm so stupid, I could have gone, you know, I was already working the improvs, and he was out in Ontario right before he died, it's the last album they put out, Do You Believe in Gosh? Yeah. And I could have just go down, go out up there, they would have put a hamburger in front of my face and I could have watched Mitch Hamburg but I'm like no nah, I'll catch him some other time like a oh. fucking idiot yeah I wish I'd seen him live I, know, I, I, mean, I think I saw him maybe like maybe I saw him twice maybe I saw him that night at the improv do stand up I don't really remember mm-hmm. and maybe I saw him at the comedy cellar one time I don't remember but I wish I'd seen him like I wish I'd known and gone and seen an hour of his. Yeah, I, I, I really regret it. It hurts to think about. Yeah. Same with, like... I, I got to see Chappelle a lot when he was younger. Mm-hmm. And, like, hungry. Like, and, like, was, like... Not that he's ever been hungry. I don't think he's got that mentality. Like, Yeah, right. He's more, he like... He shows up all the time. He just does it. It's yeah. what he happens to do, and he, you know. But I that was... I mean, that was funny shit watching him do stand-up, like... Probably my age, I guess. Yeah, I think he's exactly my age. How old are you? Forty-one. Oh, then I'm older than him. But yeah, I watched him when I moved to New York and started stand up at twenty-six. He was probably twenty-five, and he was just. My man had has already a ten-year vet at that point. He was a man. He was good. Mm-hmm. Like, I know that sounds so silly to say, but like he was so fucking, so casual on stage mm-hmm. I also saw him get into a fight one time on stage he had made a joke about uh, black people uh, cigarette companies marketing to black people mm-hmm. like the cools and the menthols he's like yeah. you know it's, yeah. just, it's just a it's just a matter of time until they start making fried chicken flavored cigarettes <laughs> watermelon flavored cigarettes right then he there were these four white guys in the road that loved him loved him mm-hmm. 
Uh, they were grown. I mean, they were not grown ups, but they were like probably twenty seven mm-hmm. or whatever. But they loved him. They were fucking so into it. I was working the door, and he. Uh, this was back when you could smoke in bars, and he yeah, was. Yeah, he yeah. asked. He was. He was drunk and probably pretty high, and he asked one of the guys in the front row if he could bum a cigarette. Uh huh. And the guy goes, "Yeah, it's fried chicken flavored." Uh huh. And Dave forgot he told that joke and was like, what did you just say? <laughs> but then the best is the guy's response. He goes, it's fried chicken flavored. Like, almost like, right. like if you didn't know that you had, if that he was trying to say timidly, like, yeah. I didn't mean to say this like a right. dick. But it, it sounded like he was going like real slow to an asshole, like it's fried right. chicken. Like a valley girl? Like, yeah, like, and Dave, I don't know if Dave threw a punch, but he like, Said something to the guy, fuck you, man. And then the guy's, and then the guy was like a grown up. He wasn't gonna yeah. take shit. I mean, I'm nothing against Dave Chappelle, but he was probably 115 pounds back then. Yeah. And so the guy was like, hey, man, you can go fuck yourself. I right. wasn't being a dick. Right. I was saying one of your jokes. And the guy right. goes, and then Dave, Dave was too drunk. He didn't remember it was one of his right. jokes. It's like and, a Chappelle show sketch. Yeah. And then, and then literally. Like keeping it real goes wrong. They went at it and like all the black comics jumped in and started fucking trying to fight these guys. Oh my God. And me and Louis Schaefer had to split everyone up. <laughs> and, and no one, everyone thought these guys were dicks and these guys got kicked out. And I was the only one that heard the whole thing. Right. And I couldn't say it to anyone because everyone was like, fuck that man. Everyone's yeah. fucking racist. And I was like, yeah. well, actually. You don't want to pick the side. I didn't want to pick a side. Pick but I was like, I was like, guys. I'm a fan of everyone right now, but this is what <laughs> happened. But you didn't bother, right? I didn't say a word. Because they already like, kicked out. I was like, they're already kicked out. It's yeah, not going to help yeah, me yeah. to tell Dave no, Chappelle no, he's no, drunk. No, 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 But, yeah. I miss I miss those days in New York when I just... I remember, I remember thinking, I can't believe there are people that just go to bed. Right? Miles. Now I'm that guy. Oh, going to bed's the best. Tonight would have been a really great night to just go to bed. Oh, dude, we should have canceled the shows. Calling lazy to work. Calling lazy to work. <laughs> <sighs> I could fucking sleep tonight. I could not. I'll tell you why I could not drink. Because if I drink, it just means tomorrow's going to be a tougher day. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds like such a pussy reason not to drink. You gotta face facts, though. Yeah. You know, like you can get you can get on with it if you do it every night. You can get on with it. If you do it every night, but who it's wants not to do it bad. every night? And um, why is that th- that such that when you do it every night, it's not that bad? Because, hangovers aren't that bad, but then when you do it once in a while, hangovers are fucking atrocious. Um, because your body produces chemicals to fight the alcohol and then all these chemicals are left over in your body so when you start drinking you're already just evening out you're like ahead of the game and so your body is producing all these chemicals to fight the alcohol and they're producing it every day and they're good at it are these fireworks or is there a fucking bomb going off where right here up here no like like literally like right to your left i just saw fireworks no, I guess not. We're not even close to Disneyland. Miles so keep going about your. Well, you you know, in other words, your body gets used to um, the, the chemicals that your body produces is actually what gives you the hangover. Um, and but when you're constantly neutralizing the chemicals with alcohol, um, you don't get a hangover as much. You're also used to it. But if you didn't drink for a week. And then you binge drank. All those chemicals that fought the alcohol that your body released are left. That's why they call it hangover. It's like leftover. These chemicals that fight are left over, and they make you feel really bad. And that's why if you have a drink when you're hungover, you feel better because it neutralizes those chemicals. Fuck. That's why people can't quit heroin because their body is fighting it, and so they're neutralizing it. And then when you're no longer neutralizing it, those chemicals are left over and they make you sick because they're that strong. Really? Yeah, it's just fighting poison. I mean, like, this has been kind of like a two-day hangover. Yeah, there's that too. I mean, your body's just like, it becomes like a fluid that your body is used to dealing with. Almost like, it's almost like a nutrient. (laughs) And your body's like, hey, where's the shit we're used to? 
Yeah. We don't function properly without it. And that's physical addiction. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, that's a nice way to come about but, that. But, I mean, it's, you know, once you realize that shit, and you know it's not going to last forever, then fuck it. Just, you know, wait it out. Watch a goddamn movie. Yeah, I don't... I don't Go know. for a job. You can also exercise a hangover clear out of your body. Really? Absolutely. Go for is this, a swim. Is this your theory or... This just works for me. Go for a swim. <laughs> go for a run. You're going to feel a lot better. Yeah. Because, again, you, your blood's just, like, pushing those chemicals through. You know, you're just clearing it out. Just like if you ate a candy bar and felt like shit. If you went for a run, you'd feel better, too. Oh, I want candy so badly, though. <laughs> I think there's shit. Yeah, I think you need like ice cream and stuff when you're dieting. Again, you hear all these. I always mix and match all these diets. Like, what wouldn't there is? Is there no like good diet? Chocolate's all right, like candy bars, especially if you want to eat dark chocolate. I'll go get some dark chocolate. One of those Rocky Mountain things. Oh, they got those. Oh, I'm gonna get a fucking load up on chocolate tonight. If I load up on chocolate, then I definitely can't drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. won't even want to. <laughs> just kind of like those, uh, I love those Reese's peanut butter cups. I mean, dude, I, this is how untethered I was to diet during these last 11 months. I would literally be on the road and I'd go and grab, go into a gas station and I'd just grab fucking, what, the four pack of, of Reese's peanut butter cups Yeah, and eat two and save two for later and then eat those within a car ride eat four of them yeah like that's so fucking unhealthy like there's no there's no part of a how do I move this seat back I don't know man alright is there anything between you and your legs you do it that way oh here we go I just want to do this they Um, say that like if you're gonna compare it to drinking though uh, those Reese's peanut butter cups are just so much better for you really because because your body has a harder time um, digesting alcohol and if you like if you drink your body spends all its time breaking down the alcohol first before it even gets to the food so that food is just sitting in your gut hold on so so your body knows alcohol is poison right okay so it always goes for the alcohol first so it has to process all this alcohol before it can even start digesting the food all right and so, so when I go out to drink and I and I pull up to the bar and have a couple cocktails before dinner, yeah, I've just fucked myself. In a way, I mean, if you have two, it's not going to be that much of a problem. Yeah. If you have sixteen, you're not going to digest that steak for weeks. So having wine with your meal is a horrible idea. No, it's not a horrible idea. It's just going to take a little bit longer. One glass of wine. Ain't gonna hurt you. Yeah. And especially, I find if you drink a glass of wine and they eat something, you don't really have that thing where you want to have another drink because you're like full, and it's just not gonna. It's not really gonna give you a buzz if you have another glass of wine. I got to a place where I, st- I could not physically drink beer. Yeah, yeah, it's so heavy. I, I was like, I literally was like, I get a drink, start drinking a beer, and I'd start feeling like I'd, I just felt like I wanted to throw it up. Like mm-hmm. it was just so filling. It is. So, yeah. That's what, I mean, alcohol makes you fat in so many ways. I mean, the day I drank this week, I went in and I gained like a pound and a half. Mm -hmm. And I didn't even eat that bad. Absolutely. It was just sugars, I guess. I, um, I was doing really good and then I went on the road for four days. And I know I put on at least five pounds. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. And it took me like two months to get to shed all that weight beforehand. I got, I got cocky. I was like, dude, I got this. So then what's the fucking pills? Like, what's the what's the key? How do you relax when you're skinny? Um, I don't know. You got to find an exercise that just wears you the fuck out. No, but if you're going to drink, you've got to fucking be on the treadmill running 10 miles a day. Yeah. And then if you're doing that, you don't want to drink because you don't want to feel like shit when you're on a 10 miles. Yeah, I mean, 
I think you get to a certain age too where like exercise just like doesn't really combat calories like it used to. Yeah. So like it's not like right an now. even math equation where like, all right, if I burn 500 calories, I can eat 500 calories of garbage. Oh. It just doesn't work like that. Dude, you want to hear something crazy? I burned 5,000 calories yesterday. Mm-hmm. My Fitbit says I did. Yeah. Because I, because I was up until fucking one in the morning. Mm-hmm. Like I got up at six in the morning, made the girls breakfast. I got up at 545 yesterday. And then I stayed up till one. Right. Well, maybe that's why I'm fucking tired today. <laughs> and then I looked Probably. at my Fitbit and it said that you I had burned I had burned five thousand calories. And I was like, what the fuck? That's impossible. Right. And I was like, no, it's not impossible. You just have been fucking moving for right. twenty two hours, twenty hours. Yeah. I love I love when I get notes on my YouTube channel from people about the vlog. Yeah. Yeah, this guy's note. I like like solid notes, like when people What the fuck? Oh that's you. Yeah. Love the blog, but you might wanna have you might wanna only have music sometimes. I couldn't hear what the fuck Rogan was saying and and listen to the song at the same time. Well usually if I'm playing the music it's because uh that whatever was said was not like super important. Right. Um. It's too much. Yeah, I want you to take a look at the vlog tonight and tell me. Okay. I'd love to. I need some sort of fucking. I guess maybe that's why Ari's so skinny because he just smokes weed all day. Yeah, he's not a big drinker. I don't understand those people. I don't know. I really like. Uh, I really like Bruce. Yeah. I know it's not the answer, but I like it. Maybe you're just supposed to have, like... Like, my wife will have, like, three drinks tonight. Yeah. And be lit. Right. Yeah, no, but the thing is about booze is it, it makes you make bad decisions, and those decisions are more booze. Oh, yeah. So it's, it's, it's tough. That's why I say, like, have a glass or two and then eat something. Then smoke some pot if you're going to smoke some pot. Yeah. The thing about pot is, it doesn't really make you want to smoke more pot. It just makes you want to go to bed once it wears off. And that's a beautiful thing. If you, wait, you think it makes you want to be, go to bed once it wears off? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. Maybe I'll just maybe I'll just turn into a big weed head. Yeah. Like Benson, I listen to Benson's pot. I, lo- I listen to Getting Dug with High all the time. Yeah. Man, he, he if they legalize it in L.A. He should open a store. Yeah, oh, absolutely. He's got so many fans uh, that that love to. Smoke you know, weed people would come out and just he just sat at the store all day. Remember the four twenty show we did? No. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I do. Packed it yeah. out. Do you remember how many fucking bowl hits he took that night? He was really high. I never seen anyone that high before. He might have taken a hundred bowl hits with people's pipes because the big thing was everyone wants to see a, get a picture of right, him right. smoking out of their pipe yeah. so then when everyone when they have friends over they can pull it up on their phone and be like dude Doug Benson smoked out of that pipe remember when like in the green room like, he was so high you ask him a question and then he just like smile for a second and then answer yeah like the, the answer kind of the answer in his head kind of tickled him I was blown away by how high he goes on stage he was so high and it's such a juxtaposition because Graham doesn't smoke at all yeah. And Graham's high energy, but everyone's stoned out of their bejesuses. Right. What a fucking that interesting... That was a fun show. It was a fucking blast. For those that don't know, we did... It was a Sunday in San Francisco. It was like a comedy festival. Because we did... Um, what did we do? We did his podcast during the day. Yes. We, then we yes. did your show at night, and then we did his 420 stand-up show after that. Me and you got beers. Yeah, yeah, See, yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah. I like being that untethered. Mm-hmm. Me and you got beers in the afternoon. Like, we w- went walking. We went up and got cheesesteaks. Yeah, we just got one beer right beforehand, because it was yeah. a beautiful day, and we just couldn't... Just couldn't... It was the last, like, beer garden before Cobbs. And we weren't going to go. And then we were just like, you know what? It's just too nice. We got a half an hour before the show starts. Let's go have a beer. Let's do this shit. And we periscoped. Yeah. It was like at the infantile ages of periscoping. Yeah. Um. Yeah. 
Imagine this whole week will be sober for me. You might as well, if you're on a roll. Well, we'll see what happens tonight. If you fuck up, you gotta ride home. Yeah, no, <laughs> Leanne, Leanne, uh, Leanne's coming down on the oh, party okay, bus. Cool. Oh, wow. Yeah. So she was like, All right, see if, see if Matt can, uh, she called you the full charge. Oh, good. See if the full charge can bring you down so that you can ride back with me in the bus. I was like, okay. Is it a party bus on the way back, too, or is it a hungover Oh, it'll bus? be a sleepy throw-up bus on yeah, the way right. back. Because they're all fucking lightweight, so they all, oh, like... Woo! They're all screaming at you. Oh, the they get down. hammered on the ride down. Yeah. Then halfway through the show, they're fucking... They're, they you got to wake them up. <laughs> That's one of the funniest things about comedy shows is... People don't know how to drink. Oh. And they... It's one of those places where people overdo it. The girl in the front row to the left last night, first show. That's so annoying. Oh, my God. Burping up salad. The, uh... She was... She was one of those people. She got fucking hammered. She has four kids. Mm-hmm. Kind of hot. Yeah. Not hot enough to be not annoying, though. Her guy was... Her guy, her guy was her boyfriend... I kind of liked him. Oh, we're getting some fucking pace right now. Gotta be careful. Oh, shit. Oh, fuck. <laughs> we, for those listening, we just had 15 seconds of 70 miles an hour. And oh, it, it felt a, so it fucking It was a rush good. like no other. It was like an the, eight ball of cocaine. The ride home on the, on on Irvine, I, what, what do you think's worse? Because the ride home is full tilt. 70 miles an hour but it still takes 45 fucking minutes uh, it's scary on the way home everyone's like fucking Tokyo drifting into each other and, yeah. and trying to fucking mad dog each other and then 9 times out of 10 you'll hit they'll do construction and then uh, traffic will be down to one lane so oh that was happening last just, night wasn't yeah, it it's just rough shit I didn't catch it last night but it happens a lot do you remember that that time when they would shut down the 5 and you'd have to take the 20 to the fucking 120 to the fucking 70 to the beach drive to the and then get, oh that was a fucking Dude, nightmare first time I ever did the Irvine Improv first of all this guy I was showcasing for power which is your management group now Levity that do they used to call themselves yeah and they were and, they, and I asked the guy that worked there I go how do I get to the Irvine Improv he goes uh he starts to tell me he goes oh you're fucking retarded if you can't find it it's where the 5 and the 405 meet and I was like okay thanks you're fucking maybe it's maybe it's backwards maybe it's you're a fucking idiot if you can't describe it so I'm I'm heading down there and all I have is a Thomas guy this is like 2001 and uh, I remember going into a Taco Bell and I go hey where's the where's the improv around here and the, the Mexican guy was just like I, I, don't, I don't know I don't know <laughs> it worked in my favor though because I showed up late and I got to go on second instead of first and second's always better than first oh that's not bad um but I just remember him saying that. And then on the way home, the five was, was, you know, closed down. And it was like, I had to just look at the Thomas guy to figure out how to get home. This is fucking... I was like, all right, I'll just keep driving. I'll yeah. get home eventually. Yeah, I did the five... I did the improv in Irvine probably the first time was in... Probably 2001... Probably 2001, 2000, mm-hmm. yeah, 2000, 2001. Um, and I remember thinking, are you sure there's a comedy club down here? Because in New York, <laughs> all the comedy clubs were like where busy things were happening. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, couldn't yeah. understand that you would drive 45 minutes away to go to a comedy club. Right. Like, I couldn't understand that there would, I, I was like blown away that, and like, and it was like packed. Mm-hmm. And I was like, wait, where are these? Where am I? And they're like, oh, you got, you got to go to Brea. This one, Brea, the old Brea. I did an old Brea, yeah. That's the first improv I ever did, I think, besides Hollywood. I did the old Brea. I did the old uh, in old Ontario improv, I think. Was there two in Ontario No, they're, they closed Brea and then opened Ontario. And then they're like, we still need a Brea. Oh, so Ontario's been in the same club the whole time? Yeah. Are you sure? I'm pretty sure. I don't know. They might have had something else out there. I don't remember. But I don't remember. Shit. Irvine's only been in two places now, right? Yeah. Well, three now if you count the little move they did. 
this year, this last year. Wait, what's the third place? What there was, was the a, first there place? There was a place that was closer to, um, what's it called? Uh, University of California, Irvine, I think. It was way close to that. It wasn't at the Spectrum originally. I never played it. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I never played it either. I heard this funny story that Todd Glass backed up a pickup truck to, like, the entrance of uh, the Irvine Improv yeah. back in the day. And so when people were exiting the club, he's like, oh, welcome to the next comedy show, folks. And he would do comedy for them as they were walking out. Oh, he is so fucking <laughs> funny. He, he, is, he has one of my... He, I heard that he would tell the wait staff. I can't remember how this works, but he would tell the wait staff when he was going long just to come out and start vacuuming. Yeah, I saw all that. The first time I ever worked, Brea was with Todd, and I was just blown away by, like, just how, what would you call it? Just, uh, he kept exiting the reality of the comedy show, in other yeah. words. Like, the like he would have plants in the audience be like, Mr. Glass, Mr. Glass, you know, which was basically this kid chicken pizza and fucking the wait staff. He, they were allowed to fuck with I remember chicken pizza. Them. Yeah, they were allowed to fuck with Todd. And he, he 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 gave them an open invitation. I remember and he would chicken get in fights. Pizza. Yeah, 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 yeah. What happened to chicken around, pizza? He's still around. I still see him in Brea. Does he work in Brea? No, he don't work in Brea. He's just like a guy that hangs out. Yeah, he stopped working at the club right when I roll. Right when I started working there. Chicken pizza and Tijuana bullfights. Is that a guy's name? No, that was a band that they. One of the guys that. I think now Irvine had Tijuana bullfights. I think Bill Bowley was telling me that at one point. Fuck, I'm forgetting all the names, but I know um, Robert Hartman and Gwen Stefani were both working at the Improv as waiters. What? That's what Bill Bowley told me. He was a waiter too, and I'm sure Aaron was there. Aaron was a hostess. Yeah. Uh, fucking the guy that ran uh, Chris Albrecht was a bartender who's he? the guy that ran HBO oh no kidding like what are the fucking odds doesn't it seem like if Dave you just Dave Becky used to run an improv too didn't he? yeah what, what, does it seem like if you just moved to LA in 91 you would have been successful <laughs> yeah <laughs> it seems that way no it's weird because stories. comedy was dying then was it? in the early 90s oh yeah I guess so so the people that were in it were in it passionate and right. Everyone else like, well, what's more profitable? But the people that loved it stayed in it, and now that's why they're in it today. What percentage of people do you think love it or just want to be famous? That are um, in it today. In, in today's society, I think everyone that started in the past eight years wants to be famous as fuck. Yes. Because everyone feels like they can be famous because they kind of are. You know how many girls I follow on Instagram that are nobody but have like a million followers? Yeah. They're fucking famous in a way. It is kind of crazy that someone could become famous. Do you remember a girl named Tila Tequila? Yes. She got famous off MySpace. I remember her. For doing nothing. She wasn't even that cute. She was just on MySpace and popular. What's she doing now? I don't know. Oh, I'm Googling her. I seen her in a porno. Oh, the show at seven? Show's at seven, dude. Good. We we'll have to tie glass it and do it from our car. <laughs> tie glass it. <laughs> That's you know, a verb now. Do you know why I love tie glass? He said to me, "What the fuck is this?" He said, um, "One time he goes, but he said it in front of Leanne. So like Leanne, Leanne had doesn't know Todd yeah. very well, so she doesn't get his entire personality. Right. Um. So he goes, "Yeah, I want you to do my podcast," and I said, "Yeah, definitely." And he's like, I'm a, and I really, w- I, I want to do it. We just, yeah. it hasn't been able to work out yet. And he's like, no, but I want it to be like special. I was like, yeah, I agree. And he's like, no, I want it to be like real special. Like you come over and maybe like spend the night and like we do it in the morning <laughs> over breakfast. And I was like, yeah, but you know, but when Todd says that, it's a good idea. Right. Cause you can imagine that you guys hang out all night and fucking get weird and everyone, and everyone's over there. And everyone passes out, and then he wakes up, and he does something fun in the morning. Right. And I go, that sounds awesome. And then he leaves, and Leanne's like, 
wait, you're gonna spend the night at a dude's house? And I was like, I was like, well, it's Todd. And she goes, what do you mean, well, it's Todd? You're like, honey, it's cool. He has a boyfriend. Yeah. I'm not gonna hook up with him. She's like, Bert, you're 42. I was 42 at the time. You're 42, you have kids. Come home. <laughs> Come home. But it's, but it's like Todd's personality is so like, I know. You know, you'll spend the night and we'll wake up early and maybe we'll make like donuts or something. Right. And it's like, it does sound funny shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He would make a great parent, I think. Yeah, for sure. Because he's so silly. Oh, he's so he fun. Get, he can get in the zone with the kid real easy. He should like he should adopt like a troubled kid who never, who hasn't been able to fucking breathe. Mm-hmm. You know, like hasn't had the space to breathe. The funny thing is, if you tell him, he'd probably do it. Yeah. Where the fuck was this that I drove to? We are forty-one minutes away. Really? Yep. That's with traffic, right? With traffic, okay. yeah. We're halfway there right now, I think. Yeah, dude, this is how much LA County doesn't give a fuck about us. It's what, only three lanes. What are they doing with all this fucking center miles. area? Well, they're going to make us new lanes. But me and you will be fucking in the old folks' home when it Did happens. that upset you? Like, I used to get upset. I was thinking of that today. Is that, well, fuck, man. I'm never going to get to experience, like... Uh, like I forget what the thing was But I was like I never get to experience that The metro is going to be amazing When we're dying Oh I bet and, it's Like they're They're working on it And it's going to go Every which way Now how great Would that be Well there, I'm sure there was A guy in a covered wagon Bumping his ass To fucking San Francisco <laughs> Going One day this will all be paved And one, we'll be dead One day I'll have a car And it'll go even slower <laughs> It'll go even <laughs> slower <laughs> I just feel like, why is everything going so slow? What not there a guy at the front? Is there a guy at the front trying to change lanes right now? Um, it's weird. It's like a chain reaction. So if something slows down three hours ago, we're still dealing with it. I wouldn't mind doing that for a TV show. Like, get in a helicopter and find traffic. Right. And I, guess they do that the, I guess they do that in the morning. Yeah, it's the news. It's the news. <laughs> uh, the reason there's traffic is there's an accident. <laughs> That'd be so funny if you pitched that. Uh, Bert, are you pitching us the news right now? <laughs> yeah. And then we'll have a guy that does the weather. Like, you're going to know what it's going to be like all like, day. Do you ever wonder if it's going to rain? Like, <laughs> we should know that shit. And if people are doing crimes out there, we should report it. Because, you know, people want to know this stuff. But, like, what the fuck? Why is everyone driving so slow? Because there's a second where it just opens up and everyone speeds. You know what I mean? Yeah. Why didn't everyone speed to that speeding place? We should all stop all at once. And then I'll hit the gas at the same time and just start cruising. Do you think it's just one asshole just causing this, just fucking laughing and slowing down? He's like, look at all those assholes behind me. For a second, Matt, I'll I thought just... that someone had built a chair on the back of their car the for someone to sit. I was like, why would they put him there? That'd be the shit. I'm fucking out of it today. Have I'm you, really out of have it. Have you ever seen a cop do this thing where they swerve back and forth and stop the traffic? Yes. So that happens. And then, like I say, it's like there's so many cars that it becomes a chain reaction. I had a cop do it. I had a cop do it right. It was on the, was it the 405? I think it was the 405. I was with my buddy Eddie. And I had him do it right behind us. Like, literally right behind us. Right. And we were in front of him. And and Eddie's like, oh, get behind him. And he's like, I was like, why? He's like, because then you can see... What's gonna happen? They're they're slowing down traffic for a, a high speed car chase. Right. And I was like, oh yeah. So he slowed down and got in the traffic. Yeah, yeah. yeah and yeah. then I realized, oh no, we're never gonna see it. <laughs> right. <sighs> yeah. See, they got no carpool lane. Like Orange County, they care about their peoples. And really? They don't give a fuck. Well, watch what happens once we hit the county line. There's gonna oh, be is five that what lanes. it is? That's what yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be five <sighs> lanes and six if you count the carpool. They got two carpool lanes. Let's see if I can find the county line of our So county. this these taxes we're paying in LA? They might as well just be constructing a big middle finger for our faces to look at. I can't believe that, Matt. You're hundred percent accurate. The second we cross the county line, mm-hmm. it fucking turns from red to go. orange. LA hates its fucking citizens. Oh my god. I wonder if it's like that in Brea. That's just like that. Everyone and the traffic slows down coming the other direction right at that point. Oh yeah, cuz there's no lanes. Three lanes, dude. 
That's fucking outrageous. Do you think that that has anything to do with the burden that I'm, I'm certain that is accrued by so many undocumented workers in LA? <laughs> I don't know. By like clearly, like I would say, what would you say? Like, I mean, this is probably about, this is just a guess, and I'll find out the fact in a sec- the yeah. number in a second. What percentage of the people that live in LA are documented citizens? Do you documented? Think? I would say somewhere between 70 and 80%. So I guess I'll say 75%. I was going to say 75% too. That's a good question. Let me let me ask Siri. It's tough because you can't really do a consensus. Siri? Oh, yeah, I guess you can't. What the fuck? <laughs> I say but, dumb hey, go shit. Ahead. They've got an estimate. Siri, how many people live in L.A. are undocumented? Much Siri get racist. Hmm, let me think. Okay, I saw this on the web for how many people live in L.A. are undocumented. 11 million people are undocumented in L.A. That's a lot of goddamn people. Okay, let's find out how many people. Siri, how many people live in L.A. County? Let me check that. Okay, I saw this on the web for how many people live in L.A. County. 48 million live in L.A. No, wait, that can't be right. Wait, there are 48,000 people living on the streets. That's a lot of goddamn people. Whoa. That really is. The census has a population of 9 million. What did I say? 11 million? Yeah. So would that that mean that 50% of the people in the city are undocumented? You got 9 million and 11 million? Well, if there's 11 million undocumented people in L.A., then and there's 9 million documented. Jesus Christ. When they do the census, they can only... There's more undocumented? So, well, did you looking at, like, 55 to 60% are undocumented? Yeah. Demographics? Let's look at demographics. But then what does undocumented mean? Because that could, that could just be people not filling out the census. Total populations. Oh, total population is... The correct question is illegal immigrant. Yeah, but I'm trying to be politically correct, but right. I, don't, I don't think they recognize that as... Let's see. Okay, see here we go, here we go. An estimate, an estimate by the Public Policy Institute of California in 2008 said Los Angeles County is home to more than one-third of all of California's legal immigrants. I added the all because I think it made it more clear. Uh-huh. Uh, one-third of California's legal immigrants who make up more than 10% of the population. Okay. So 10% of the population is legal immigrants. Illegal? Illegal immigrants. Okay. So there's roughly like 900,000, a million illegal immigrants. But then where did they come up with that 11 million number? It's probably in the country. In the I don't know. Country. It's, 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 everyone's got their own fucking survey. Let's break this down. 52% of LA is white. Really? Try to guess what percent. <laughs> You're never going to guess this. What? What percentage of LA is black? Uh, 11. 8. Wow. I know. Makes sense. You don't see a lot of black people. Native American. Oh, um, 0.8%. 0.5. Good job. <laughs> Asian. Uh, 22. 13. Okay. Uh, Pacific Islanders, irrelevant. Not irrelevant, but it's 0. 0.3. Small. Yeah, it's, yeah. Some, uh, <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay, ready for this one? This stat? Yeah. How, what percentage of the people living in Los Angeles, Los Angeles are some other race? Some other race? Yeah, because it's 5%. It, 21%. Okay. Uh, just some other they're race. Just, they just fucking... There's a lot more going on in LA than... What percent is, is two or more races? Jesus Christ. Three. Hispanic or Latino? Wow. I guess it's not shocking Consider the name of our st- cities. Los Angeles. Los Angeles. What is it? 47%. Does that really check out? 52 plus 47... Yeah, that doesn't fucking check and then, out. Like the blacks. Yeah, how does that make sense? It doesn't. It doesn't add up to one hundred. Fifty-two percent, eight percent, so that's sixty percent. Thirteen percent, that's seventy-three percent. Twenty-one percent, that's 
Oh, no, no, I did... I might have done this wrong. Because 52 plus 47 is 99, right? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I did this wrong. No, wait, how did I fucking do this wrong? Where's Armenian? That's in the other. Some other race? That's part of the other. Maybe I did this wrong. I don't understand. Total population. Uh, fuck it. Um, yeah, that doesn't. The average household income in Los Angeles. Thirty-five thousand dollars. Oh, average ha- household per capita income. I think it's only like fifty thousand. Median household income is fifty-six thousand. That's Medi- two people, man. Median family income is sixty-two thousand. That's crazy. Yeah, man, that's rough. That's the average, son. I could I could watch a TV show that just broke down statistics of a city. Yeah, right. I'm so hungry for something that just gives me facts these days. I know because everyone's got their opinion on the facts yeah. nowadays. Yeah, it's like I, you go to a website and you see this thing and you, they're they're like, you read something on a website and it's like, uh, dot 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 feminists. Uh, Horseshit argument, uh, microaggression, bullshit, uh, social justice warrior, and you're like, yeah, I kind of agree with that. And then you realize you're reading uh, red state documents, and you're like, oh fuck, I don't want, can't agree with you. Well, like, yeah, also, no wonder everyone, you're gonna say that shit. Everyone also pulls the facts that they want because there's so many sources of truth now, quote unquote truth. Yeah. That like, if you're running for president, you go, well, this is true. This is the statistic. And no one goes, where are you getting that from? Everyone just goes, yeah, all right. Because no one's even swayed anymore anyways. Everybody knows exactly what they want to think. Yeah. And they want to just root for a team. It's like sports. Politics is like sports now. Yeah, no one's got an open mind. I'm looking on the internet wanting to hear both sides of the story. I want a non-biased viewpoint yeah. so I can form my viewpoint. Because I really am on the fence. I think I, I could either go either way. Me too. Like gun control... Clearly, there is a problem with fucking firearms. Everyone gets in this all country. emotional, though. Everyone gets yeah. all emotional. But at the same right. time, I understand wanting to have a gun. Right. I get that. Like, like so. And I want a gun. I just don't want to take the fucking test. I don't want to take the test because it's going to take too long. And I just want it now. Yeah. Like I'm the kind of guy that would be like, like totally realize that gun laws need to be established but I'm not a guy that would be like do I really need a fucking waiting period right. I want it now <laughs> I said something about abortion last night but but like I'm on both sides of the fence on everything I, what I want is an unbiased opinion so I can form my opinion yeah like a no bullshit website because these are the facts like a Malcolm Gladwell that's why Malcolm Gladwell appeals to so many people it's because his fucking stats are exactly that stats uh-huh. and it's like uh, this percentage of uh, people are in jail, of black guys are in jail, of the black population. That's why when abortion showed up in the 70s, yeah, crime yeah, went yeah, down. Yeah, yeah. Like, That's I love that hearing book. that shit. What? Isn't that in that book? Yeah. Uh, Outliers? Outli- no, M- Tipping Point or something, maybe? Breaking Windows? One of those. One of those. Let's see when this traffic stops. We're off close way to the county line. Not close enough. Uh, in very shortly we're going to pass a river we're going to pass that in and out on the left and then we're hooked up oh, I could go for fucking in and out it's funny we did this new year show together in Irvine this past year and uh, I was looking at Twitter and I saw you this is on New Year's Day you were like first meal of the year and it was a picture of in and out and I was like I ate it the same fucking in and out yeah Oh yeah, we did. Did we do that show together? Same lineup, Jen, me, and you. Oh fuck, that was a year ago. I like that memories on Facebook where they tell you, "Hey, yeah, yeah, seven yeah. Years, years ago, ago you were making fun of this." Um, no, I think I had I had a good year this year, and I think about you on stage going, "We are gonna fuck 2015 in the ass." <laughs> I had a good year this year too. <laughs> yeah. So say that more often. <laughs> Me and Hartman looked at each other like, fuck yeah, dude. <laughs> I 
fuck We both said it to each other a lot. We were both like, we were gonna fuck 2015 in the ass. Yeah, I had a good year. I worked a lot, but I had a good year. Probably a bad year for health. I wonder what I weighed back then. Probably like 230. Probably 235. Are you telling me you gained 20 pounds this year? Oh, yeah. Easily. Well, I can probably tell you exactly what I weighed then. Too bad Facebook didn't tell you that. It would be cool if it pulled your stats and they're like... Like, I, like I'm not totally adverse to uh, the internet knowing everything about me they and tracking all my point. shit. Yeah. Like, if they were like... Someone's like, you know, they're going to fucking check what you Google and then they'll send you ads on that shit. Well, yeah. Thank you, though. Right, Thank you. Right. Yeah, let's quicken this space up. Why are all my ads for depression and fucking AA? <laughs> um... <laughs> I remember one time a manager being like, never say your age on stage. But now it's just like, what? everyone knows everything about you. The fucking, there's nothing you can Never do. say your age on stage. Yeah, yeah. I was I'm only fucking... 27, too. That's how fucking worried they were. They are like, Matt, just say you're 24. The, fu- the funny thing is, try to find the threshold number that gets a laugh. Right, exactly. The num- like, like yeah, yeah, yeah. be right, like, I'm relevance. 32 and yeah. everyone believes it yeah I'm 29 and like find the number where no one believes it right <laughs> I'm 58 and uh, let's see I feel like people only tell you you look good if you tell if you're honest about your age all right I think There's going to be girls with checker oh, flags here, go, here, here in a go. second. My wheels are starting to itch. Oh, wow, this is depressing. What are you looking up? I forget. Hold on, hold on. Oh, you're looking up his weight. Two. This can't be right. This must be March, April, May, when we May, get- June... August, September, October, November, December. So this must be probably two years ago. So it wasn't this June, I know that. I was 231. And you're getting close to that again, right? Right now? No, I'm 243. Well, I mean, I'm 10 pounds away from it. Yeah. But 231 was my fat weight. Yep, we just passed the county line. Orange County, Orange County line. Did you see that? Yeah. That sign that said Orange County line, and now we're fucking flying. You notice no homeless or blacks? <laughs> we're doing it. <laughs> Auto. Said, this is fucking ridiculous, man. Thank you for my carpool lane, Orange County. My old lover, she don't treat me so right. Dude, it's LA that's fucked. That's what I'm saying. They don't give a fuck. It's almost like that uh, that Kurt Russell movie, Live and Die in L.A. Yeah. It's just like L.A.'s so fucked, getting out of it's so hard. Yeah, can you imagine if there was a disaster? Oh. Don't even bother. Yeah, just Don't might as well hunker bother. down and tape up your windows. Yeah. Fucking go get a hot dog at Pink's. <laughs> yeah. I always have a full tank of gas just in case something like that happens. Is that right? But who am I fucking kidding? This is like just Christmas shopping, what we're dealing with today. How the fuck would you get out of L.A.? You can't. Your best bet are the metros, actually, because most people don't even know how to use them. That's when you need a motorcycle. Yeah, dude. But you Let's may, be I mean, honest, you always need a motorcycle. I'm thinking about buying one just to have yeah. floating around the house. Just to I take, like... I think as like, long as you take them around the neighborhood, it's fine. Yeah. I don't think you should ever ride them on the highways, to be honest with you. Oh, I can't imagine anyone that does. I've done it before in, like, different states, uh-huh. and it's fucking scary. This is not a good idea. What, this little Just fucking... Just a fucking turn in a Jersey wall right in the middle of a Yeah, what is 80. that for? That's nuts. Orange County is a cruel lover. <laughs> She's inviting. Going, going... But... I think the fastest I've ever gone on a motor... I've probably gone pretty fast, but steadily... 
the fastest is probably 70 miles an hour. Yeah. And it's scary as fuck. I've only ever gone, like, on a residential street when I was a kid. And it was only, I was only going, like, 20, 30 or whatever. Oh, I've gone... I've taken a motorcycle, I think, to, like, probably, like, 80 before. Mm-hmm. Or maybe 70. But it is scary, man. You're very vulnerable. Absolutely. Like, you realize very quickly... Oh shit, man! This isn't a joke. Like, did you hear Dean Del Rey got sideswiped? What? Oh yeah, I he did. Got what happened? Sideswiped going like 70, 80. He's fine. What happened? But he was doing that thing in the movies where, like, like in that Chicago video, where like he's just sliding down the goddamn road. Are you serious? And he could easily got run over. So is he? Is he done riding motorcycles? No, he told me. He goes, "I got a car, but then I'm, I think I'm gonna get another motorcycle." It's hard once you get that in your blood. Yeah, exactly. Alonzo Bowden's been riding motorcycles his whole fucking life. Yeah. He's in the military, though. It's different. Did you hear, did you hear his, him talking about his addiction to uh, coke? No. Oh, man. I wish I knew what he talked about this on. Was it Rogan? Did he do Rogan? Probably. And he He's talked... He's Corolla before. I know that much. He talked... Um, he uh, he talked about being addicted to coke mm-hmm. and like just what he went through and uh, man I wish I remembered more stuff because it was a really good conversation you should check it out whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. but like I knew he had addiction problems and he was sober but I didn't realize how bad he was because he was like like <laughs> he was definitely sucking dudes dicks no kidding no I'm lying oh. I'm lying <laughs> <laughs> It's not a guy who wants sucking my dick. <laughs> Alonzo Bowden. Think of comics you can't imagine sucking your dick. Um, everybody. Name, no, name, just name like one where you're like, well, that guy definitely would never do it. Would never do it? Like, not, like, or just it would be so uncomfortable. Like, um, it's all going to be uncomfortable, but like. You go first, Bert. Okay. Uh. I can't imagine Joey Diaz sucking my dick. No way. <laughs> I could imagine Ari or Duncan. Okay. But not, not Joey Diaz. No, you're going to get it. Oh, he just... You're going to get a beaten. Dog, stop moving. <laughs> I'm going to bite your shit. Fuck, man. I'm trying to do you a favor here. Uh, by the way, Joey would not find that funny. No, so... Sorry, Joe. Uh... <laughs> That's fucking great. Ugh, two fucking shows. It's so much easier to do two shows when you drink for them. Yeah. Ugh. Unless you like, overdo it on the first one. No, nah. It's because you have a reward waiting for you. Right. You're like, as soon as I get to the club, I'm going to get a drink. And you're like, oh, I can't wait to get to the club and get a drink. But then when you're not drinking, you're like, I can't wait to get go to the club and get a water. <laughs> See what salads they have. I don't have that at home. Oh, I'm burping up whatever fucking salad. I have so much green shit in my body. Yeah. It's funny because that shit's good for you. Your body's just like... Doesn't even know what to do with it in a way. It's like, just get it out. My body's One literally like... So wait, we're just shitting all this out, right? Right. The rake. I mean, are they? I don't even know if it's getting the nutrients from it or just shitting it out. I'm sure Every it is. shit I take is green. It's good for you, man. I'd like to put. I wish there was there was like a pill you could swallow. Mm-hmm. It was almost like a flare in your intestines, so it would like right when that you swallowed that pill, it would block everything in front of it and behind it, yeah, and create like a like a like an inch of solid like red, like just like a, or pink fluorescent pink yeah. so that everything you ate you could find out if there was stuff in front of that like you were like oh that's from yesterday's meal my marker went through oh right 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 right. that would be interesting but I think certain things stay in longer than others really? yeah like they say meat takes a long time to digest it stays in your stomach much longer than the salad you ate so you got probably some red meat in your stomach from like a month ago no it doesn't stay that long does it? fucking lettuce I don't know if it's a month you know, vegetarians will tell you it never Sorry, comes out. I'm not sure what you oh, that's Siri. All right. 
Siri, how long does red meat stay in your stomach? Checking my sources. Just okay. this on the web for how long does red meat stay in your stomach? Does red meat rot in your colon? There you go. I don't eat a lot of red meat though. Oh, I eat tons. Oh, here's another thing. This is exactly what we were just talking about. It's a dot org. So what? And, and it's all a hunting dot org. Like it's all fucking safari. Right, right, it's a hunting right, dot org. Right, 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 right. So they're going to tell you something different. And then the first vegetarian. answer most vegetarian propaganda <laughs> is just false. <laughs> and it's an inversion of the truth. Right. Most vegetarian propaganda is not just false, it's an inversion of the truth. Okay. Here we go. I like we this. crush food in our mouth where it analyzes, breaks down some of the starches. In the stomach, pepsin breaks down the protein and strong. I can't read. I can't fucking read. I'm gonna get car sick. But so it basically, this is a propaganda website. I can't even get a fucking honest answer on like how long does some meat stay in your stomach? This is either fucking vegetarians or hunters telling me one thing. Try just make up a website like anatomy.com or something, biology.com. Let's see if I can go back. It looked like they had one in here that was. Oh, I was, did you know that the, um, never mind. Siri, how long does red meat stay in your stomach? Let me check on that. Okay, she's like, I Here's thought I answered I found that. On the web for how long does red meat stay? Justanswer.com. don't have an answer. Fucking ridiculous. Is all traffic stopped up there or are we just in a bad lane? No, I think it's all going. I think we're in a bad lane. Why is the fucking carpool lane slow? This makes no fucking sense. Is there some guy broken down on the fucking carpool lane? Because I'll lose my shit. We got a show to do. What time? Oh, it says we'll be there at 644. That's if there's no traffic. We got 12 miles to go. Oh. All night. All night party. (laughs) She's coming over. Do you ever sit there and lay in bed and go, what exactly is my talent that people are paying me for? Uh, yeah. I say that a lot. Like, I go, like, theoretically could. Like, a bear could do my job. Like, if you could teach a bear to ice skate, Mm. it would definitely be more entertaining than watching me doing stand-up sometimes. And you can teach bears to ice skate and do flips. That's stand-up in general, though. It's just some dude talking for an hour, hour and a half show. It's like, why is anyone even paying for this shit? There's no discerning why <laughs> you'd pay one guy more it's money talk. than another guy. Yeah. Like, why would David laugh. Spade make more money than than you see fucking Dean Del Rey, you know? you want to see his grill. That's why. You're like, yeah. Oh, that's that grill that I recognize. That's Holy David Spade. Shit. It is him. Oh, we're merging with these motherfuckers. That would have been a good help there, Siri. I don't know how long red meat stays in your stomach, but get in the right-hand lane. Yeah. See, that's where I'm, I'm cool with the internet taking over everything. Right, right. And right. having a computer, computer chip in my ear, and them just going... You're oh, doing it wrong. Bert, I noticed you're in the right-hand lane. There will be traffic as you merge with the left-hand lane. Get in the far right. You're pumping too hard right now. You won't last two and a half minutes. I wish I had like a, I wish I had like a barometer in my head. Where it was like some little voice that would be like, hey, you've talked about this one subject too long on stage. Change <laughs> subjects. You're making people feel uncomfortable. I definitely made people feel uncomfortable last night. What were you talking about? Talking about things that I find shameful. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, what fucking subject? Who, I, yeah, like, I why would I bring that up? I'll tell well, you two things. That's when that one I, woman was losing her shit, right? Yeah, she was like, you no, can't tell us no, this. 
it was like that that person I can't understand because I go she's not being honest about anything yeah and I can't stand that I don't mind it like that one that one lady we were I said something about let's find out let's find out I don't know, whatever, I don't want to even talk about it. But, like, the thing about the asking the girl if she's ever gotten shit on her finger, she's like, no. She's like a child's. And I was like, you never had a person's? And everyone started getting around her and being like, wait, what are you talking about? You never had, you don't shit on your finger? Right. She's like, never. And I was like, no, she clearly has. She's just not comfortable sharing that with us. Right. And then it's people like that. I don't mind them lying and being silent. But that one girl on the far left was just annoying. Yeah, and was like, time. was like, ew, that's gross. You're disgusting. And I'm like, yeah. stop it. You're what's bad for this country. Is you, you fucking saying opinions that aren't really your opinions because you've gotten shit on your finger too. Right. Just trying to preserve your image. You're si- yeah, you're simply saying what you think everyone's going to say as opposed to saying what you think. Ooh. Like oh, when I was talking about she gave birth, she had four kids, and I mentioned that my wife shit during childbirth, and she was like, oh, gross, I didn't do that. And I was like, yeah, you did. They just didn't tell you. Like they don't, right, they don't like right, bring right, it up. Right. No one said it. I just, like, I'm a comedian. Shit. I'm telling the story. Right. Ooh, that's gross. You're gross. Your wife's gross. You're like, ugh. I am. I like talking about a second car though. We have been looking at cars for about a year mm-hmm. and cannot find a fucking car. How come? Uh, everything's too expensive that I want. Uh huh. And then what I what we can afford, I just don't want to drive around in. Right. Well, fucking hold out. One day it'll just be staring you right in the face. Yeah. To drive right past it. It's like I, I like like we could afford a Jeep, but I was like, I'm 43. I can't be driving around in a Jeep, like in like a, a Jeep, Jeep chair, like a right. Jeep. Right. And Leanne's like, well, it's a cool car. I was like, yeah, but I'm not a personal trainer. Like, yeah. I'm uh, me. I, what am I gonna drive a Jeep down to the fucking improv? And it's stick. I'll lose my goddamn mind. I'll, and halfway through, I'll go. I make more money than deserve to ride it. Drive a stick down to the thing because my right. wife thinks it's a cool car. Right. I want like a big body luxury sedan. Yeah, I like that shit. I had a Chrysler 300. Did I tell you that? Oh, I love it. It was dope. It broke my heart when I saw it wrecked. It was just like destroyed. Segura used to have an Impala, which I loved, and he hated, but I loved it. I was like, this is a relaxing car. Yeah, anytime you feel like you're driving a couch on a on butter, yeah, <laughs> that's that feeling. That town car, like old school, tough guy car. Look at this motherfucker. That was almost me last night. As I was driving home, my was fucking. I was at like four thousand RPMs on the highway. I was like, that's not. It. I can hear it. Mm-hmm. I was like, what the fuck? So I like slowed down, thinking it just wasn't changing gears. Yeah. And then finally I pulled over to the side of the road and I was like, fuck, my car's overheating. Yeah. What happened? And I had it in third gear. Oh, shit. I had it in, like... Instead of fifth? In, no, instead of, like, drive, D, oh, I had it Oh, yeah, 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 I gotcha. You had your snow fucking gear on. Yeah. Three low. We'll be there in ten minutes. Cool. Well, we might as well podcast ourselves into the green room. Might as well. Let Jen take over. I'm sure the levels have been atrocious on this. Whatever. What are you going to do? Yeah, if you guys don't like the levels, just well, you, if you're already here, you're like, well, fuck, I already buried it through it. Yeah, like remix it. Yeah. And then put it out for us. Oh, it's funny. Nice. It's funny. Doug Benson. You know what song that is? Yeah, it's from Revenge of the Nerds, right? Yeah. I, did, I put it in my vlog today. Here, I'll play it for you. This is when the lambdas are there. The pie lamb should be here any second. What was the (laughs) what was the name of the black guy? Uh, Uh, L L L. No. uh, 
DL. No, what was his name? I forget his name. The guy, the Revenge of the you, Nerds. You call him UN? UN. Yeah. UN. U, U. I'm glad you ner- you guys finally got back at them. It's so funny, they're in their office and he's like, I can't, I can't, we can't have you guys in our fraternity. And then one of them's like, the main guy's like, well, it says right here, you have to, like, at least give us a trial period. And he's like, all right. UN. <laughs> Hey guys, Wonder Joints. Hey guys. That was a good movie. You moose, sure can party! <laughs> By the way, they go through and sexually assault the Pylam, Pylams. So much sexual miscontact. He miscontact. rapes that girl. He rapes the girl, and they also put cameras in the sorority house. Yeah, they put cameras in the sorority house. And then watch them get naked all day. Total sexual fucking he, misconduct. He rapes the girl so well she falls in love with him. Yup. That is telling you. If you can trick a girl into fucking you, she may fall in love. Even before I knew the laws, <laughs> I watched that and I go, you, you, you can't do that. Uh, I remember thinking, I remember thinking, that's my move. That'll be my <laughs> move one day. Since it's okay. Yeah, just real quick grab someone's helmet and walk right. in and fuck his girlfriend with a helmet right, on. right. That's crazy that that is straight up rape. Straight up rape. And he's the hero. Yep. Do you think anyone said that in the writer's room? They were like, hey man, it seems like Lewis rapes her, right? And they're like, no! <laughs> that happens? I had a friend that happened to. <laughs> yeah, and he didn't get arrested. You ever seen those porns where it's like Russian guys, and they blindfold the girlfriend, and they're fucking him, and then all of a sudden their, brother, their friend comes in? <laughs> I haven't seen that. Me either, then. <laughs> but I know, I'm, I'm aware that that could easily go down. Oh, yeah. It goes down in the Ukraine a lot. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Make sure you wear a blindfold during this one, honey. Yeah, who wears a... And then and then it always backfires on the guy because she ends up liking it. Right, right, She gets right, mad right. at first and then ends up... Yeah, like, I think it's a little staged. Well, I'm glad you raped me. I'm, I'm upset that you raped me, but I did like it, so I guess you're off the hook. Yeah. I said to someone the other day, I was talking to someone, and I said, I'm pretty certain... Any sexual story where it was two guys and one girl is pretty much rape. <laughs> you think so? Like, anytime it's more than, like, two guys, it's definitely rape. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, okay. Like, definitely, you should definitely, if if you, if you at one point one of your buddies says, Hey, do you want to fuck this guy, this girl with me and my friend? Right. You should definitely Don't. go, hey, man, you need to check yourself right now. Right. Because I think what's going down is, is unlawful. <laughs> right. Like, cause I, I've been in a lot of whether crazy. it is or not, it's gonna go down as unlawful. Yeah, because even if she says she wants to, then she doesn't want to. Yeah, it's crazy that the law is set up that as a guy you have to be two steps ahead of what the girl wants. Right, she you have, have to have be retroactive like retroactive feelings. Yeah, cause I mean, cause I mean, I've been in a situation where a girl was about was was like totally willing to fuck a couple of guys. Uh huh. Totally willing. And I was the one that pointed out, but I, I pointed out this before any of the... The, the new era of PC. Yeah, I, this was back in the day when that, yeah, yeah. that shit didn't go down, and I was looked at as like a dick for being like, guys, this feels a little rapey. Yeah. And someone's like, why would you even say that as fucking soon, word? As soon as that word comes up, she's like, yeah. As soon as that right. word came up, her attitude changed. Exactly. She was like, yeah, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> and I was like, I'm just saying what I feel like. I like, Double just seems uncomfortable. Lie. Yeah. But, uh... But like, yeah, I don't. I don't think there's any such scenario really where, where. I mean, I've never heard of a girl, a legit girl, being into two guys at once. No, I've heard somebody talk about it, and they were cool with it. A girl? Yeah, she brought it up for no reason. So I know like, she what was, was cool the story. With it. She was just like, yeah, when I was in high school, these two guys came over, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna hook these guys up. And she what? talked about it in a proud way. And uh, Is she, she hot? didn't regret it. She's very hot. I'll tell you who it is after the podcast. Oh, I know her? Yeah. She even said it on a podcast. I don't know why I am. But I still don't feel like saying her name. Yeah. Because she's a hero. And I don't want to call her out. Yeah, that, Yeah. no, no, no. That's crazy. Two girls and one guy is totally fine. I think it was in her parents' house, too. <laughs> really? <laughs> Can you imagine? Defile your parents' <laughs> living room. I'm dying to know who it is now. I want to fucking get to the improv.
wonder if I should eat again. I probably should. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm not super hungry, though. Yeah, me neither. <laughs> Maybe I'll start a Christmas tree lot in my front yard. For what? For what reason? Uh, just to make a little extra cash. I'll go ahead. Yeah, honey, I've decided I'm not going on the road anymore. I'm now a Christmas tree salesman. Like, every December, I just decide to stop doing stand-up and just sell Christmas trees. Yeah. That would be fun, actually. I bet you there'd be more than one comic that would, like, rather work at your store than go on the road that month. And, we, and then at night... We sit we around do, and fuck off. We do sets at night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I bet, I bet you can... I bet, how much, the Christmas trees are expensive as shit, they're like 300 bucks, right? Considering they're free. <laughs> yeah. In the forest, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're very expensive. Considering they grow out of the grounds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are pretty expensive <laughs> considering that. There's one right there. Yeah, there's a, there's a bunch on the side no of the even, road. No one even planted it. Um... Yeah, if you like, you figure your overhead is what is going to be expensive is buying all the trees. Yeah, well, the thing you got to drop. You got to drop at least twenty grand to get by trees. You want prime location, but if it's at your house, then you come in and people are like, like they feel like they had an intimate experience. Right. Well, especially, I mean, you're in a good position. You can advertise on your Twitter feed. You can advertise on your podcast. You can advertise maybe on the Travel Channel at all your shows. Come by. Here's my address. Come by my house. Like, think about it. Say David Spade. He's got a big front yard, yeah, right? Yeah, absolutely. Probably lives in a mansion. Right. I wonder if he lives in a mansion. You think he lives in a mansion? I think he lives in a mansion. Ask Surrey. Surrey, where does David Spade live? Okay, I found this. And tell me where he lives. Ask if he lives in a mansion. Siri, does David Spade live in a mansion? <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Okay. I found this on the web. Does David Spade live in a mansion? Yes, he does. David Spade sells his $10.3 million man- Malibu mansion. Dude, $10. Point- Is this hard Is stuff? This us? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he lives in a mansion, all right. All right on the beach. Good. What the fuck? He listed it in 2007, didn't sell it until 2013. Yeah, because remember 2008 went down? Oh, yeah. I was really looking for a house right then. It's on the PCH. I only made uh, nine hundred twenty-five thousand dollars off the mansion. Poor guy. There's one for me. He's big and bob nice to have one for you. Man, he had a great fucking place, the Malibu mansion, and it was on the beach on the PCH. Think about how long his career has been. He's been making millions for longer than when I was in high, like when I was in college. What is this? I can't make a left turn right here. No, no, no. Oh, I you don't go, do it. I need to go. It's the next further. one. Okay. Right. Yeah, I think you're right. Yes. You pull well, it in there. It'll work either way. Yeah. What do you think his net worth is? Oh, I, I'm not good at this. Siri, what's say. David Spade's net worth? Yeah, she knows better than me. Checking on that. Holy shit. Holy shit. What are we looking at? Oh, let me guess. $130 million. No, that's too high. $40 million. That'd be nice to have. That's a nice cushion. It's a nice, like, a... It's like, I may or may not work this decade. $40 million? What has he done worth $40 million? It's the fact that he's been working for 20 years. And just doing everything? Yeah, and it's he's doing like, stand up. Why is he even doing stand up? Yeah, he does. He does a lot of stand up. He must love it. 
going to be a neat guy to know. My friend Bobby Miyamoto opens for him all the time. Oh, seriously? Yeah. Do they? Is this already unlocked? No, this isn't us, is it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, this is us. Does it just open automatically? Oh, I missed the fucking... We have to go in the other way, don't we? No, this, is this it. isn't it, is it? No, yeah, you missed it. It's the other one. This is the exit. I don't see the entrance over here, Bert. I think we need to go further down the road. No, 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 no. Do you it's... see an entrance right there? Because I don't. Where? Back there. Well, there's got to be an entrance if this is the exit. Um... Is that it, though? I don't know if that's it. I think so. Shit. Is there another one? Where's the P.F. Chang's? Right. Let's try this one over here. I think it might be right here. Okay. By the steak place. I'm all turned around. There's the Edward the Cinema could over there. could be right over here. Yeah, I think you're right. It might be the next one. You getting all this, podcast listeners? Isn't this exciting? You guys, I hope you guys were enthralled. You know, when comics go to gigs, they can't always find it, even though they've been working there for 15 years. Um, yeah, let, let, make a short list of celebrities you'd like to just start uh, folding into your life. Me? Yeah. I think I'd like to hang out with Luke Perry. I think I'd like to hang out with... He's uh, in your swing zone. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he lives right around me. <laughs> Does he? Yeah. His kid used to go to our school. His kids are older. Isn't that crazy that, like, fucking Dylan has high school kids? Oh, yeah. Da -da 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 -da. Me and Ian Bag saw him at a, a com comic book convention in, in Louisville, Kentucky one time. Must we be like, oh, doing shit. an appearance. Yeah. I wouldn't mind starting to hang out. I don't think I could hang out with Sandler. I want to hang out with Michael Rappaport. I really love his podcast. I think he's out of it? his mind. He's got a podcast? Yeah. This is it right here. Yeah. Good job. Hey, how come he was out here? Did he know we were coming in? He knows we're late. What's up, man? Oh, yeah, we are late. Where can I park? Oh, I pulled in right, pulling just back up right there. Dun 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 well, I can't say that this was the greatest podcast we've ever done. But it's it definitely a podcast. It podcast. We did our homework. Post roll, what's that mean? It means after your podcast you have to see. Okay, go ahead. Okay. So again, if you want to listen to it, Audible has it. With more than 180,000 audiobooks and spoken word products, you'll find what you're looking for. So get a free audiobook and a 30-day trial today by signing up at www.audiblepodcast.com. Again, that's www-audiblepodcast.com. And check out uh, my podcast. Check out my blog on my YouTube page. Just go to burtburtburt.com and you can find all my shit there. But go to burtburtburt.com and go shopping through our Amazon banner on burtcast.com. All right. Have a great, great, great rest of your weekend. All right. You know this. I don't need to say it, but I'll say it anyway. I love you.